Welcome back again. So the goal of today is to learn about the program MPLAB X. Uh, MPLAB X is an integrated development environment. It's what we're going to use to like make our programs um, and then download them to the chip. Uh, so we're going to try not to focus on code, but you have to have some code to use it. We're going to focus on using the tool is kind of the goal for today. So I guess if we're going to use this tool, the first thing we ought to do is uh, download it. Uh, so go ahead and uh, there's a bunch of ways to get there, by the way, to do this installation. You can click on the, the link to get the text version. Like This is basically a homework assignment, is this video. Uh, but I'm just going to go through it just to kind of show you what it is. Uh, what I chose to do here is I chose to uh, just go ahead and go to microchip.com. Uh, so I just went to that URL to start things off. Um, and then I'm going to navigate from there. Uh, where I want to navigate to is design support. Uh, MPLAB X IDE. Uh, so this one's pretty easy. So you can go ahead and do this uh, link here. Um, it will tell you all about it, which is exciting. Uh, what you really want is the Downloads tab. Uh, you can download MPLAB X for Windows, uh, for Linux, uh, or for Mac. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you're using a Mac, you can, you can use that. That's fine. Um, most people, you know, you're going to be using your Windows machine. Uh, so just click on this link. Uh, and then you can save it wherever you like, um, and it'll just kind of start that download. Uh, while it's doing that download, uh, you can go get the compiler. Uh, so the compiler is, just to kind of describe it, um, MPLAB is a program, kind of like you know Chrome is a program or something like that. And then the compiler is used inside that bigger program um, to convert your code from like C into like assembly or, or machine code that the PIC can run. Um, there are a lot of different compilers. Um, I mean, too many compilers. Um, so there's a bunch of ways to find the one we're using. The one we're using is called the MPLAB C18 compiler. Um, so what I chose to do here is I chose to just type that into the search box um, on, MP on Microchip's website. Uh, so I just typed in uh, MPLAB C18 compiler. Um, and then I'm going to see, oops. Uh, where it takes me to. Uh, the reason I hesitated there is because I know that it's going to require me to log in at some point. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you where it's at. But then once you log in, you have to kind of like navigate there again. So MPLAB C18 compiler. Yep, that's the one we want. Um, there are a lot of them. Um, <clears throat> the one that we typically use, I, th I think that this link right here would totally work. Um, but I want the one that says, um, for academic use available here. So there's a special free version for academic use, which I believe is the exact same as the other one. Um, once you're in the free, so this is the web page I like to see, MPLAB C18 compiler for academic use. All right, that sounds exciting. Um, there should be a bunch of versions, uh, like it'll say MPLAB uh, C for PIC18 version, um, probably three point something. Uh, grab whichever one is newest. Uh, you can see that, you know, the day I'm on here, it's, you know, these three are on here, so this is the newest one. Now, as soon as I click on it, I can see this pencil. This means I have to be logged in uh, with a .edu account. Um, so if you click on it, it's going to take you to the login page. You probably don't have a login, so you're going to have to create one, uh, which is a pain. Uh, so you're going to have to um, to create a login. Um, my guess is for you, so for me it auto-populated. For you, I guess there'll be a link somewhere that says create a login. Uh, once you're signed in, uh, then you're going to be successfully able to uh, to get this thing. So now I'm signed in uh, with my .edu account. Um, it's annoying. They'll send an email to you to prove that that's your account. Uh, just go through the steps. It won't be too bad. Uh, once you've got both the, the files ready, uh, you can go ahead and do the installations. Uh, so uh, one is a zip file in this case, and the other is an exe. Uh, no big deal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, extract the zip file, um, which is comical because all the zip file is is it just extracts an exe, which is funny, right? Um, I'm just going to keep it in my downloads folder for now because it's going to, when it installs it, it's going to put it somewhere, right? All right, so I've got these two things downloaded. 
let's go ahead and go into my downloads folder um, and let's run them. Uh, I'm going to choose to run the MPLAB X uh, installer first. I think that is the, the pattern that works out better. Uh, you will get asked permission questions and things like that. Uh, the setup is very simple. Um, I just let it choose all defaults, right? So it'll do whatever it wants to do, um, except terms and conditions. By the way, I think that except terms and conditions thing is funny. I think that if you ever want somebody to click on something, just say I agree in the button. I think all ads like on the sides of pages should have like an I agree button because people would click on that thing so fast. It's like a, an instant. Um, so it's going to do a little install here. Uh, I'll just let it finish. Um, if it asks you any questions uh, about device software, that's great. Yeah, go ahead and install those. Okay, once it finishes, uh, it'll give you this message that says, hey, this is just a program. Uh, this is not a compiler. Um, you'll have to go somewhere else to download a compiler. Um, and yeah, I, I, we understand that. Um, I'm going to uncheck it and download it later. Actually, I've already downloaded it, so I unchecked it because I don't want their help. I know exactly where my compiler's at. Um, so that last step was telling you you needed a compiler, uh, but the program's installed. Um, over on your desktop, there should be a, a link to the MPLAB X IDE. There might also be one for like some kind of switcher, um, and then also one for, for something else. Um, don't even worry about those things. The only one you want is the one that says IDE, not IPE or something like that. All right, so that, uh, that step is done. Uh, next step, what we want to do is uh, find where I'm at. Uh, so I've got the, um, the C18 compiler to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and run the C18 EXE. Um, so I went ahead and ran it from Chrome here, uh, but you can find it in your downloads folder. Um, and it's going to set up the compiler uh, for PIC 18 MCUs. Uh, the, the microcontroller we use is the um, PIC 18F4520. Uh, um, by the way, these things are both installing into uh, program files, microchip, um, and then inside microchip, it'll have some path, right? Uh, but really, it's just the, uh, the microchip in your program files that we care about. And so the compiler is going to install next. Um, so I'll just wait for it to finish. Cool. So once it's done, uh, you've now got the, uh, the PIC 18 compiler uh, on your computer, which is great. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to, uh, so I'm done with this guy now, uh, you want to open up MPLAB just to make sure it opens. Um, my icon is off screen. It looks like this. It's like an X and it says IDE on it. Um, so double click on that icon. It should be on your desktop. Um, and that's going to open up MPLAB. Uh, so I just want to make sure it opens, uh, make sure you've got it installed, um, and everything uh, everything is good to go. Uh, so in the next uh, video lecture, uh, we'll actually do something with it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you could get it installed in this one, and we'll make a program next time.